Well hello, John Neal here, chalkboard artist, and this is the DVD you can buy of uh, all the details of the chalkboard artwork that I'm demonstrating on YouTube. Uh, thank you very much for those who have bought this already. Uh, you can get it from my website, all the instructions are there. I was asked by uh, Matthew Cleary in Texas. Hi Matthew, thanks for buying the DVD. I was asked to uh, expand a little bit more on the letters of the alphabet. I've done A, B and C on the, and whatever, on the DVD. But I thought I'd go through the rest of the alphabet. I don't know how long it's going to take, maybe two or three videos. But I'll try and we'll set off and I'll give you an outline of what uh, the alphabet means to me and some of the ways that you can use some of the different letters. Before I set off and go right through the alphabet, I'll just tell you the outline of the way I'll do this. Now, I'll start with the, the main standard letter, the, the capital letter that the Romans gave us, which shows you where the thicks and thins and maybe where the serifs are. Then as people wrote these letters down, as we went through the centuries, they then turned them into quicker and easier ways of doing it. So you ended up not with capital letters, which is only what the Romans used, but they then formed down to small letters, which were easier to write. And you can see how that occurred. And then I'll also show you one or two ways that I maybe use the letters to change uh, to, for, for different effects. I can't go in too far because it would take forever to go through the whole alphabet. But uh, we'll see what we can do anyway. Right, so the first one is the letter A then. It, the standard letter that the Romans had was uh, thin that way, thick that way, and a line across there. Now the serifs will have occurred there, there, and there. And as I've said before, they really were marks made by the chisel as they chiseled in. And the thicks and thins were from the brush marks when they would mark out the stone. Right, now that then will have been corrupted into this sort of thing. That, until eventually you get that letter A. So we have a small letter A, a minuscule as it's called. This is called the majuscule, capitals and smalls for me at the minute. So from the capital letter through to this one, which is what we have now. And one of the ways that you might uh, use this, you could, for instance, put the two slopes that way. It gives it a bit more action. And I often like to do the cross that way. So that's one. Another one is that you might put this bar very low and then you can also think about and of course the way these ends occur they're straight you could even try rounded ones okay so there's the letter a i think oh i rather like doing that one i'll just show you that the small letters you can of course do that but i find it quite easy to do that one as well Oh, with a bit of space, let me just show you how I do a flourish. Really, maybe like that. And so the letter B. Now, B, standard, that would be sort of thick. Make the top section slightly smaller, and bigger. So it seems to fit, it seems to sit with the weight on the floor there so it looks like it's sitting on the ground the serif would go there and there and if you wanted to you could thicken that and you thicken at that point and that point there so those would go wider across there and now the B degenerated sort of into that and you can sometimes see which is a whole I learned this as a child Sorry, but I think the Americans write it like that. That degenerates horribly. I wouldn't use that at all. But you can see the way it changed into a small letter. And then you could do a B like this. And then take a line down, imaginary, and take it there. And notice that is bigger than that one. And then a flourish. There's one or two nice flourishes you can do. Start back here. Would make an interesting looking B as well. There's the letter B. The letter C. 
classically like that. This will be the thicker part here. There'd generally be one serif on it, possibly there, which looks quite nice. And then easy enough to make it a small letter C. Not much else to say about it, but you could possibly do that. And flourish maybe just a curl in the top there. I'll stick with the letter, D. I'll go move straight to D now. D looking a little bit like that. That'd be the th thickest part there. And also just there. So that would stay the thinnest. And then that would go thick there. Serifs would come off there. And then that would have degenerated into maybe rather than, than one, two, it'd go one, and then they wouldn't take the pen off to do that. This is as they would write the words, all these capitals. And then that would degenerate to that, which eventually turns into that. And a flourish, you might just do like that. Now the letter E, I like the letter E. Now, if we do the top and bottom there, <clears throat> you could decide where this middle is to go. And again, with the letter B, make the top, I would suggest, a bit smaller than the base. Make the base a little bit bigger. So the, the middle there, the, with the waist of it, would need to go about there. If I hold the pen right, you get that angle like that. <clears throat> and again, the thick part would go there. The others would be thin. And the, uh, the serifs are really lovely on here because they go there there, there, there. Oh, it's serif heaven, look at them all. And they can be squared off or pointed or whatever. <clears throat> now the letter E would have degenerated from that, <clears throat> excuse me, and then that would have been written maybe like that to make it easier to do and eventually down to that. Now you can use an E in a number of ways because it's good to get them consistently the same that is one way you can go straight across there and round that's another way uh, you can also do it as you would with a pen i'll do it I'll show here and you would tend to come from the top down so you have to make that move one two which means you end up finish there you don't finish here so if you finish in there you often then see a flourish coming out the middle I'll show you again which is rather nice Let's do F down here. Very, very similar. That'd be the thickest part, of course. And keep that fairly high. Serif there, there, and there. And right across the bottom. And I suppose that they would have speeded effort by doing that, which then would have turned into that. And then this, this one. <laughs> I remember this as a kid which is very fancy, and I don't tend to use that, but you can get a lovely line like that for an F. And the flourishes, you could even, 